Yo, what is going on YouTube? I hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Today I'm bringing you guys that relic guide you wanted. I don't know how else to do the guide other than just like tell you if the relic is good or not in support and then when or why you'd want to build it. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. I'll look at the upgraded ones too. I'll tell you which one I think is better and if there's a scenario where there's a reason to pick up the other one. So yeah, let's just jump right in. Starting off with Cursed Onk. Cursed Onk is obviously only built when they have healing on their team. I would really only build it if their comp revolves around that healing. If they have a Hell, a uh, Yemoja, Terra, gods like that where they're healing kind of the entire team and not just one single one-off person. If they also have like just a lot of healing uh, built into their kits or stuff, they have Dive of Kama, Guan, uh, they have a Hunter for healing. Maybe their mid laner's got an, a Soul Gem or something like that. And then their support has some healing somewhere too. It's fine to pick up the Ankh also because th this is very valuable. If you read it, take 20% more damage and then all healing reduced by this effect is distributed to your allies in a 40 minute radius. So this one's good. The Lighted Ankh is the better one. If you're ever building one of the Ankhs, build this one. Drowned Ankh is terrible. This one is terrible. As of April 6th, 2022 at 9.08 a.m., Drowned Ankh is terrible. Never pick it up. Okay. Aegis Amulet. I would probably never pick this up in support. Doesn't really matter what their comp has. Uh, even if they have like a Kraken, there's better relics somewhere else. Just don't buy Aegis. Neither are good in support. Heavenly Wings. Always at least an okay pickup. They, there's a lot of slows in Smite. A lot of characters have slows. Uh, relics have slows. Items have slows. So there's almost always a good reason to pick up Heavenly Wings. The, the decision you have to kind of think about is, is there just a better option elsewhere? Entangling Wings is good if their dive has really no CC immunity or like no dashes. If you're getting dove by um, like an Osiris or something like that, you basically just force out his ult it, or you get a good amount of distance wasted. Hasten Wings, I think is almost always good. It is very, very, very strong when you are team fighting in the late game. And like when your ADC finally gets like those six items, you just pop this and your ADC can usually win you a fight because movement speed and like that basic attack attack penalty just being gone is insane for a team fight. I think Hasten Wings is almost always the better pickup, but there is some value in Sprute and some games. Blink, does your character need to be the engage? Are you playing Kabrakin and you need to get your ult off to like start the fight or a stun? Uh, are you playing Ares and you want to blink ult, blink chain, geb, blink ult, stuff like that? Is there more value in a relic elsewhere? It's kind of the same thing as wings. It's usually not a bad pickup, but some gods are very bad. You're not going to play blink Ganesh. Corrupted blink rune is actually really good right now. I think scorching blink rune is also pretty good. It really just kind of depends on what you need to do with your engage. Are you planning on killing someone with your engage? Do you want to reduce their damage onto you when you engage? If you're playing like a Bracken, I think... This one is usually better if you're playing like a solo laner and you have like actual kill potential. This one will feel a lot better. When Sir Kett was really OP in support, Scorching Blink, and then her kit was OP as a combo. But now her kit does no damage, so that dream is dead. Beads. If they hit you with a certain CC, is it almost a guaranteed death on your part? Do they have Dodgy and you're playing Yemoja? Do they have Dodgy and you're playing Ganesh? And then they have a Poseidon too. It really comes down to if you get hit with that CC, are you going to die? That's how to decide if you want beads. Chaotic beads, don't build it ever. Temporal beads, if you're building beads, upgrade it to this one. TP, unless you're genetics, don't buy TP in support. Med, Med kind of got a pretty big nerf at the beginning of this year. It's kind of fallen off viability a lot, but I think the upgraded, this Med on the left is still incredibly strong. The problem is the level one is pretty weak. You could mess around with getting this one at level 12 because it's giving you massive heals and then cooldown resets by 1.5 seconds for every pulse it reduces it by six seconds over that four seconds so this one is very strong and i don't think i'd ever build the cloak of the avatar if you're ever going into meta as a support just build into this one it's this one's very good base meta is pretty meh i wouldn't recommend building it at level one right now and then i would never build this shell the same way that sprint is good in nearly every game shell is good in nearly every game it's a long cooldown which is one of the downsides of it but it's always going to be at least okay Fortifying Shell is very, very, very good right now. I think it's one of the best relics in the game for Peel. And then Phantom Shell is better than Fortifying Shell if they have a wall you have to be able to get through. Or like a Cthulhu's body blocking a lot and you need that to be able to walk through the Cthulhu. Thorns, don't buy Thorns. It's one of the, it's probably the worst relic in the game right now. Yeah, it, it is the worst relic in the game right now. Don't buy it. Sundering Spear. I think Sunder's actually in an okay spot right now. Uh, having two charges of it is actually pretty underrated. It allows you to sunder one person in a fight and then if they get out you can sunder the other guy or if you know you want to kill this guy and you need a little extra damage you can put two into him i think it's fine at level one but it 
does, it's definitely not on par with having like a shell or a heavenly or one of these other ones but it's okay and then into the late game with this one that splash damage highly highly underrated you can get a five man sunder on the enemy team a five man sunder just keep that in mind you you can i, I got a uh, a three man one a couple days ago or actually i guess it was like a week ago or something now but it, it was i chunked like three or four people by like 700 damage or something like that it's actually very strong and i think sundering blast is a bit underrated i think sundering siphon is a lot worse i think it's just usually not strong in my opinion i think sundering siphon is not very good right now i think this one is a good level one start but it's not great it gives you a good amount of power and it gives you move good movement speed if you're getting low but you have to keep tapping into it it's also something where if you're not playing in that area you're getting no value out of this relic bracer of brilliance fantastic late game item or uh, relic it is one of the best late game relics in the game because it allows you to play aggressive and defensive 20 percent power and 20 percent movement speed absolutely insane and then bracer of illumination just it is a massive ward and that is basically what it's good for it'll, it'll give you supreme vision but that is about all it is is going to be giving you i think the bracer of brilliance is almost always better but i think there's some games where the bracer of illumination might not be too bad horrific this is the best level one relic you can have for a 2v2 when we get to frenzy i'll talk about why it's a little bit worse but this one is reducing their damage dealt their attack speed and their movement speed and this is just the level one one and it's only 130 second cooldown once you get all the way up to emblem of increasing peril if an enemy deals 10 percent of an allied god's maximum health within the duration the debuffs effects are increased by 10 percent each so the movement speed is decreased or increased by 10 attack speed reduction is re increased by 10 damage dealt reduction is increased by 10 and this can stack three times the emblem of increasing peril is probably the best late game relic period that's how strong it is i actually think it needs a nerf i think uh, the rest of the relics are pretty balanced but i think this needs a nerf and then this one's just why build it when this one is just 90 times better don't build this one ever frenzy so the reason that frenzy isn't as strong as horrific is they counter they counter each other 15 25 this one lasts for six this one lasts for five but in 2v2s hitting your abilities and hitting autos is also important and decreasing their movement speed by 30 percent makes it so you are guaranteed hitting them with all your abilities and all your autos and they are not guaranteed to be hitting you that's why i think horrific is the best level one start however it's a lot easier to use frenzy all you have to do is hit your ally uh, and then they just have to hit the wave easy as that both 130 second cooldowns belt of frenzy really good level one start really good level 12 and then belt of insatiable hunger i actually think this one is maybe a bit stronger right now you can make this last 16 seconds if you time it correctly if you time it perfectly on the fire giant because it's on fire giant also i don't know if it's intended it doesn't say it just says it says on an, on an enemy god but if you hit it on fire giant or gold fury it extends it to or i guess i don't know about gold fury but if you hit it on fire it extends the duration if you do this on a fire giant fight and right as your belt of insatiable hunger is about to give up you kill the fire you've now got a 16 second frenzy during this fight that's about to pop off after absolutely incredible and then the belt of berserker is really good if you need to like insta burst that objective because it is very very quick off the rip but it slows down pretty quickly too i think it's pretty 50 50 it just kind of depends on what you want this one's better for team fights this one's better to just one shot objectives but yeah that's what it's looking like in my opinion i think you should kind of stick to onk sprint blink shell horrific and frenzy the most i think they're easiest to use and i also think they have a lot of upside too all you gotta do is think about who do I need a frenzy? Oh, my backline. Who do I need a horrific? Oh, the enemy. Literally the enemy, not even anyone specifically, just someone on the enemy team. Uh, it's just a lot easier to use. So yes, there it is, the short little relic guide. Uh, I hope I answered all you guys' questions. If you have anything that you're still curious about, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you soon.